This is Nikon's cheapest mirrorless camera in the Z system, but is it any good for landscape photography? Let's find out. What's up y'all, it's a Project Photography, back with another video, and today people, today, before we get started, make sure to follow my Instagram, Facebook, and now we have a new TikTok. Make sure to follow all three of those. But this right here is the Nikon Z30. And you might be asking yourself, don't you have two Nikon Z6s for landscape photography? Well, I do, but this isn't gonna be used for that. Instead, this will be my main video camera from now on. Because honestly, the Nikon Z6s just is not made for video. But for me, what I do as a content creator, the Z30 checks off all of my boxes. And a big problem that I found when shooting is that sometimes I'll be using both the Z6s in a product shot, but then I just need something to film them and I just, I don't have that. And that's exactly what the Z30 covers for me. I mean, we have amazing features like a fully articulating screen, which for photography doesn't make a lot of sense, but for video, it makes a ton of sense. We have a nice big record button, so it's very easy to hit record whatever. And the lightweight compact body makes it an incredible camera to just throw in my bag along with my two Z6s. But this is not a videography channel. Instead, we do a lot of landscape photography here. So I actually want to test this as a landscape photography camera. And I think it's really interesting for a few reasons. First of all, this is Nikon's cheapest mirrorless camera in their Z series. So I feel like for a budget standpoint, this would actually make a lot of sense for a lot of landscape photographers that don't want to break the bank and get something that's full frame. On top of it, being lightweight means that we can travel more and just throw it around in different scenarios, but it does need to be tested. And that's exactly what we do here in the project photography. So I'm gonna be putting this through this paces. Today I have on the 24 to 200, which actually makes a really good telephoto pairing because now we get 300 millimeters on the long end and it actually fits the body quite nicely. So today we'll be shooting at one of my local parks, something that's a little bit more casual. And then I'll test it a little bit further and dive in more into the landscape photography stuff when I have my 12 to 28. So that's gonna be an entire video on itself, but today we are just gonna be doing a first impressions of the Nikon Z30 for landscape photography. So let's cut to the B-roll and get right to shooting. What's up y'all, we're now behind the scenes, behind the camera, and really quickly, I am shooting at sunrise because I actually was planning to shoot at sunset that day before, but my GoPro just decided to stop working, so we're shooting at sunrise. And honestly, this is one of the best sunrise shoots I think I've done in a long time, and it's not even at a location that is known for being necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing. I mean, just look at that photo right there. I feel like we're getting amazing colors, and the lighting that day is just absolutely insane. So while I'm using this Z30, plus the 24 to 200, I'm really focusing on getting those telephoto images and really utilizing that extra crop sensor factor we have when shooting at the long end, especially at 300 millimeters. And we're kind of using it a little more here. Shot a photo of the moon and definitely has a crop a lot. This photo was at 2.1 megapixels after the crop, so it definitely lost a lot of resolution. But as you can see, the photo actually came out really well. Very surprised about that. But anyways, this is an area that I've shot at a lot, even in a previous few videos. But I mean, just shooting here at sunrise is absolutely gorgeous. We have these beautiful mountains in the background. And I think this trail right here gives it a really nice sense of movement, leading your eyes from the bottom of the frame all the way up to the top, as you can see right here. And I think the thing I really like about this image is just how great the colors came out. I mean, we're shooting at an ideal time of day in sunrise. And this is a little more zoomed in than I would normally shoot for a photo like this because we are working with 35 millimeters on the wide angle side because this is a crop sensor camera. And I think that's something you have to kind of note when using a camera like that. But overall, I think we're just getting really good images here. I'm very happy with this one as well. And we can go ahead and keep moving on here. And so what I really want to do is zoom in a lot. And I see this mountain peak in the background. And again, we're going more to the 300 millimeter side of things. And I think this is a really good job at illustrating why you would pick up a camera like this. Because we're able to get that longer telephoto side of things. And because Nikon doesn't have a 7300, this is as close as we're going to get. And I'm actually really surprised with the crop sensor image quality. I mean, not necessarily too surprised because I have used a Nikon Z50 in the past. But the Z30 is keeping up really well when it comes to the image quality here. And right now we're going to be testing the dynamic range because this is a very 
high contrast situation. And I got that plane in there, which I was really happy about. And moving on to the edited version, we can see we bring back a lot of those shadows, still retain a good amount of quality in those shadows, not losing too much of it to noise. And I just think the colors come out so perfect here. The sun is coming up and it just comes out for a fantastic photo. And as we move on here, uh, something I really want to note is that I think using these at 30 without an L bracket is definitely a bit of a challenge. We don't have one, but it's something I definitely talk about in this video. And we're going to go more to the horizontal orientation because the sun is coming up. So as the sun comes up, we really want to capture more of that light. And the lighting is going to change drastically. As you can see here, the edited version is just absolutely stunning. I did a lot to this photo. I included a mask in the center part of the frame to kind of mimic a little bit of that sun coming in using that dehazing slider and adding a bit of warmth. But I mean, the colors in this are just absolutely stunning. And we get a very similar composition as to before, but this time in more of a horizontal orientation, mainly because I feel like a lot of this landscape is moving left to right when it comes to those mountains in the background. And that's probably one of my favorite images of this shoot. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. And one thing I really enjoyed about shooting in this area is just that, you know, I've seen my photography come a really long way. I mean, this is where I literally started shooting landscape photography. And I mean, it's just crazy that you can come to these same places and get completely different images because my skill set is just so much more diverse. I just know more about photography and able to capture those compositions that I want. And honestly, this is a really nice area, but it kind of just shows that you do not need the best locations in order to come up with great images. You really need to know your lighting, your compositions, and how to edit them properly. That's all that really matters here. So that is pretty much the end of the shoot. I do end up taking more photos later, but that's not on camera. But these are the three images I really like the most. I mean, the mountains here are just absolutely stunning. The lighting is incredible and the colors just, there's just something about this image. And this was while the sun was coming up and I really feel like I was able to capture exactly what I wanted here. This image here is kind of in the same lines along with the last one. I mean, the color is incredible. I think the sun coming out on that left-hand side really adds a nice flair to it. And this photo right here with the plane going through it and the sun coming out, just great timing overall with the sun coming through and you can kind of see that bit of a glow from the top and the bottom to the sun and while the airplane is just really great timing. So overall, love these images. Let me know what you guys think. But anyways, let's go back to my studio and I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions of the Nikon Z30. All right, y'all, so we are now back in the studio and I'm ready to give my first impressions of the Nikon Z30. First of all, the fully articulating screen was a really interesting thing for me in my landscape photography. With my Nikon Z6, when I put it into vertical orientation, there's no way for me to see what my composition looks like, especially if it's way lower to the ground, since the screen only tilts two ways. But with the Nikon Z30, being able to have the camera in vertical orientation, but also being able to see my screen because I can kind of flip it down, is really, really useful. It actually helped me get better compositions overall. But when it comes to the horizontal side, I did find that it's a little bit tricky, mainly because the screen is out to the left-hand side, a little bit more difficult to actually grab those compositions, but I didn't feel like I wasn't able to grab any because of it. And I think the interesting thing with fully articulating screens is that it's good for video, but I think photography on the other hand is okay. We are able to get the different angles, but I personally think a three-way tilting screen is better for photography in particular. But I really don't think it's that big of an issue when it comes to Z30, especially because in vertical orientation, we're able to have that screen flip down so we can see it. But overall, using the Nikon Z30, it's exactly how you would use any other Nikon Z camera. It's pretty similar to my Nikon Z6 in terms of its settings. We have both of the dials and going through the menus is pretty much the same. And the big thing Thing that's different between the Z6 and the Z30 is the lack of EVF. Now, did I miss it for landscape photography? The answer is an astounding no, because I just don't use my EVF for my Z6 in general. I can see how it's a different issue for a lot of other photographers in different niches, but because I'm using the LCD like 99.5% of the time anyways, it doesn't really matter to me. In fact, I kind of liked not having the EVF. I feel like it made the camera a lot smaller, and I feel like using the articulating screen was definitely just a different experience overall that I personally actually enjoyed. Now let's move on to talk about the image quality and the sensor because it is the exact same sensor as the Nikon Z50, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, I really like the Z50. I was able to get some really incredible photos and that's a camera I talked about and raved about a lot. So when we're talking about image quality, we're getting very similar images to the Z50. 
in terms of the color, it's very nice and vibrant. The dynamic range is something that I think, you know, you kind of expect out of a crop sensor, which is why you would go to a full frame. It's not nearly as good. And don't get me wrong, this isn't full frame image quality, but is the Z30's image quality going to stop you from getting great photos? The answer is an absolute no. I mean, just look at these images that I took today. They're absolutely stunning. I mean, for me, the thing I was most happy about is definitely the colors. The colors hold up really, really well. And as I zoom in more, we're still able to get very sharp photos. So the glass definitely takes part in that because it is a full frame lens. But overall, I feel like image quality wise, we're getting very nice images out of these at 30. And like I said, at the end of the day, it is not a full frame camera and it's also not meant to be. I mean, I picked this camera up for about $550, which is pretty cheap, especially for a Nikon Z camera. And I think this is gonna appeal to a lot of people, especially on a budget for a landscape photography. Now you might be asking yourself, are you gonna add this to your camera kit for landscape photography? And I actually might, I might not make it an integral part of the kit, but it can absolutely be a tool that I use in conjunction with my 24 to 200. But because I'm using it in a telephoto scenario, I'm able to get the extra 100 millimeters on the long end. And because you know we start at 24 millimeters, that's plenty wide enough for the compositions that I wanna get. That isn't wide angle at least. So even though this is a camera that I mainly purchased for video, I really think there's a lot of interesting implications for it for landscape photography. I mean, you're able to get all the images that you want because a fully articulating screen can go any orientation that you want. There isn't an L bracket for these at 30 and there definitely needs to be one. Hopefully someone could come out with that. But that's probably the only thing that's kind of stopping me from using this as a main landscape photography camera. The other thing is too, I don't really know how I feel about single SD card slots in particular. I know these Z6s have single XQD slash CF Express cards, but I, I personally don't know how I feel about single SD. But honestly, other than that, I think this is a really good camera. I think a lot of people will be really happy with it. And pair with something like the 12 to 28, or even adding the 50 to 250, which is a lens I had for a while, I think would make a really great pairing. So yeah, balling on a budget with the Nikon Z30, I think a lot of photographers, if you're in that budget range, this might be the camera for you for landscape photography in particular. So anyways, guys, let me know what you think of this camera, the Nikon Z30. Like I said, I'm mainly gonna be using it for video. Every once in a while, if I want the extra 100 millimeters of reach, I can absolutely throw this in my bag. It'll be just fine alongside my two Nikon Z6s. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for experiencing the world with me today. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.